of them. Reverend Jeremiah Wright was the pastor for Barack Obama for almost two decades in a church in Chicago, Illinois. Reverend Wright, it seems, was a big promoter of something called black liberation theology. And we're told that he would often quote the works of a Harvard University professor named James Cone. Now, if Barack Obama attended this church for almost 20 years, the church of Pastor Jeremiah Wright, what did this Cone teach that seemed to be so important to Pastor Wright, the pastor of Barack Obama? Well, Cone taught this. He said, the goal of black theology is the destruction of everything white so that blacks can be liberated from alien gods. Is Jesus an alien god? Does Obama agree that black theology should be pursued, and that is the destruction of everything white? The American Freedom Press, in an article back in December of 2008, talked about Harvard educator and also Robert Mugabe, the president of Zimbabwe in Africa, who were demanding the eradication of the whites, the killing of the whites. The Jewish Talmud says that all Gentiles should be killed. Kill the best of the Gentiles. Well, maybe it's not an accident then that Barack Obama has selected almost all of his cabinet as anti-life. In other words, pro-abortion. In fact, as a legislator in Illinois, Mr. Obama actually voted for partial birth abortion. Well, maybe the answer to who he believes is God or what is his conception of God can be found from one of the chief supporters of Barack Obama, a Jewish woman named Sarah Silverman, the comedian. She did commercials that in the state of Florida that helped Obama win that state during the election. She has done a HBO comedy video entitled, mockingly, blasphemously, Jesus is magic. She makes fun of Jesus. She mocks him. She even pretends to have sex with Jesus. This is a sick Jewish comedian. Here, she dresses up like Jesus Christ with a halo and wears a red robe. How fitting, the color red, because the Bible talks about the red dragon in the last days, the serpent who is the devil. His color seems to be scarlet red, as is the whore of Babylon's. And here is Miss Silverman once again, but this time she wears a t-shirt. It's a red t-shirt, the red of Soviet communism, and she wears the Soviet communist red star. She's very proud of being a communist. What relationship does communism have with Rothschild and with Zionism? Well, Dr. Henry Mako, author of the outstanding book, Illuminati, The Cult That Hijacked the World, on page 104 says this. He says, communism and Zionism are Rothschild proxies. Two pincers in the banker's plan for world government dictatorship. And communism and Zionism is currently masquerading as globalization. Certainly, Barack Obama has given every indication that he is in favor of globalization, of global governance. It all works together. Communism, Zionism, Rothschild, bankers' plans, world government, dictatorship, globalization, says Dr. Mako. Ernest Elmshurst, in his excellent book, The World Hoax, back in 1938, said that Marx, and Karl Marx, of course, the founder of communism, the writer of the book Das Kapital and the Communist Manifesto, that he had a Jewish revolutionary program. That's really what it was that became a reality in the Soviet regime. And a Jewish state was then in the making and that one of the Zionist dreams had come true. The five-pointed red star of Zionism was adopted as the insignia of the Jewish Soviets and was made the national emblem of the USSR. Now remember this red-colored star with its five points. You see, the Rothschilds were called the five arrows and the five-pointed star was one of their emblems. But there's more to Barack Obama than just being a puppet of the Rothschilds and of Zionists, although we'll learn much about that. It is reputed that he is also a member of Prince Hall Freemasonry. Barack Obama, like all the other black leaders in America, is a Freemason. 
This is a poster that was published, and it was advertised on the Internet, welcoming fellow Masons to come to the Masonic inaugural ball in honor of the 44th President of the United States, Barack Obama, conducted by the Lodge there in Washington, D.C. Barack Obama and his Masonic inaugural ball. On their website, the Prince Hall Masons, that is the black, the black Freemasons. You see, there's always been a separation of the whites and the blacks. And here on their own website, they campaign for Barack Obama. If we get a list, and I show you here a partial list, of famous Prince Hall Freemasons, we find many black names on it. There is, of course, Sugar Ray Robinson, the famous boxing champion. But there's also Julian Bond, the national chairman of the NAACP, Thomas Bradley, mayor of Los Angeles. There's the black revolutionary during the 60s, Eldridge Cleaver, and it goes on and on. Reverend Jesse Jackson is a member of the Harmony Lodge in Chicago, Illinois, no less. There's Quisi M. Fumi of Baltimore, Maryland Lodge. There's Congressman Charles Rangel of New York of the Joppa Lodge, number 55. And Reverend Al Sharpton, New York City civil rights leader, also a Mason. And then there's this man. Yes, David Patterson, the current governor of New York. They say he's legally blind. Well, maybe in more ways than physically. He too, according to the internet, is a Freemason. He was raised as a Freemason in Boyer Lodge Number 1, located in Harlem. Another Freemason is Hugo Chavez, president of Venezuela, a socialist. Here he is giving a Masonic handshake with his comrade pal, Barack Obama. Why do I use the term comrade? Well, because that's what Hugo Chavez calls him, comrade Barack. This is an artist painting of Chicago's Masonic Temple. Look at what a huge building it is. Many of the buildings and the architecture of the city of Chicago, Illinois, where Obama hails from, is Masonic in origin, including this black, all-black ebony building. And notice nearby the Egyptian Masonic obelisk. The all-seeing eye that's on our dollar bill, of course, is a Masonic symbol. And then if we really want to know who the god of Barack Obama is, maybe we should go to a Masonic publication. Maybe we could turn to the New Age magazine of September 1950, page 551, in this article written by a Freemason, C. William Smith, entitled, God's Plan in America. Is it also Obama's plan in America? Well, here's what the plan is all about. Mr. Smith wrote, God's plan is dedicated to the unification of all races. Well, of course, the Jews do not agree to that because they refuse to be assimilated into the Gentile race. But Mr. Smith continues that God's plan, that is the Masonic God, is dedicated to the unification of all races, religions, and creeds. All religions and creeds. This plan is dedicated, he says, to the new order of things. It is to make all things new. Now we have the reason for Obama's change. A new nation, a non-sectarian religion. In other words, a religion that doesn't believe in just one God. A religion that has already been called the religion of the great light. The goal, he says, is to unfold the new age of the world, a novus ordo seclorum. Now, one of the things the Masons do is take an oath to protect their Masonic brothers. And this has been very convenient for Masonic politicians throughout the decades. From Ronane's Handbook of Masonry, page 183, we have the oath, the statement of belief of Masons. It says, you must conceal all crimes of your brother Masons. And should you be someone as a witness against a brother Mason, be always sure to shield him. It may be perjury to do this, <laughs> says the Masonic Guide. It is true, but you're keeping your obligations. So what is Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, Charles Rangels, the Rothschilds, yes, the Rothschilds, according to the book, 10,000 Famous Freemasons, Mayer Amschel Rothschild, the first baron of the Rothschild clan, was a Mason. All Rothschilds are Masons. And what is required of them but to conceal all the crimes of their brother Masons, even if it means perjury. The Jewish Tribune, back in 1927 in New York City, gave us an idea of what Masonry is all about. Masonry, said the Jewish Tribune, is based on Judaism. 
Eliminate the teachings of Judaism from the Masonic ritual and what is left? Freemasonry.